Man, this stuff is hard. If you watched the last video, you might remember that we were making a new interior for SV Rosa. With the good materials we'd been carrying with us since the States, we began assembling. For other projects, we would have to make do with the materials available to us in the southernmost state of Mexico. Hey! Stop hitting me! It was a hard and long three months of non-stop messy work, but we were happy in the end because we were on our way to an even bigger, fancier sailboat. That was earned through an accumulated credit of good karma. People have asked us a lot lately what the heck we were thinking. What the heck are we doing now and what's going on with the new boat? But thinking of those final days in the boatyard, I've had another question on my mind. The mystery of Puerto Madero and Tapachula and Chiapas for me was that it was the most vegetable filled. It's like the state of Mexico where all the fruits and vegetables come from. And there's all these great mango trees everywhere, fruits and all of and oh, yeah. It was quite frustrating because I went to the market there. Just like, it was like the last couple of, or last two days that we were rebuilding Rosa. And I went to the market with the girls from the boatyard. This is like the most markety market I've been to yet. Perfect for, you know, if we were going on a long passage on the boat, we could pack all these great root vegetables that keep well. They had soy chunks like every size. They had like the gigantic chunks, they had the medium sized chunks and the little ones. That's my favorite on the boat. What is it? Uh, just soy protein. It's fake meat, so you can make it taste like any meat, just like tofu, but it's dried, so it's perfect for storing. I didn't know that. I, I totally thought they were like, Either they were pasta. And they had this, but then I was like, ah, we're not going on passage from here. <laughs> With that experience in the boatyard, was like my most uh, shocking or like clear experience of what it means to drink too much soda. That's what it comes down to is like if you drink only soda, it, you know the what's the movie called uh, where the guy does the experiment it leads McDonald's for a year? Supersize me. Supersize me. This was like our supersize me but for like soft drinks. So for 90 days we only had soft drinks and like nothing else, or I only had soft drinks and like pumpkin seeds for <laughs> And all that's all I ate, but I like gained weight. I felt like shit. <laughs> you look pretty depressed as well. Yeah, like so it, it works on your mind too, right? Yeah, it affected everything from like here all the way down. Because we were just trying to cool down and just like, you, you just want to, after being in fiberglass dust, for you know eight hours a day you just want to like sit down for a minute in the middle of the day have a cold drink and the little market there has beer ice and the only reusable bottles in mexico available are coca-cola bottles we're out in the ocean we experience a lot of plastic bottle pollution in our life so we were getting the only thing with reusable uh, bottles and that was like, we went on the Coca-Cola diet and it was awful. Don't do it. I, I think in the end, if we rented that house for double the price instead of the hotel room, we might have saved ourselves a lot by cooking our own food, taking we advantage. We probably just finished a job earlier, we would have been more motivated to go to work. Yeah, we probably could have done it, could have done more energy. Because it was really hard to get up in the morning. Yeah. yeah. It was usually hard to get up in the morning, but one day I managed to roll out of bed and go for a hike with Penny, our boatyard neighbor, and Hillary from Veruna. We took the Colectivo minibuses in the direction of the nearby volcano as far as they would drive us. and then had to get my blubbery, tired legs out and start walking upwards. And I felt the effects of the Mini Mart diet and the long boatyard hours. 
Locals sprinted up and down the trail around us as we headed as high as we could to see what would happen when we get to the border between Guatemala and Mexico. Spoiler, we didn't make it over because of the coming rain. We had the choice of doing a hike up the proper path where you're supposed to see birds and wildlife. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's what the, the sign was saying. We opted for the, the hike where there was more traffic. There were horses and families. families. And Farmers. <laughs> yeah, I would recommend. I don't know if it's a hike. It's more like a it's daily. Just the trail across the border to Guatemala. A daily uh, little walk for some people. Yes, so we observed the changing weather around us and chickened out. Yeah, the clouds are coming over the mountains, so we're escaping. But I've been told that the rest of the hike was exactly as I'd hoped. If we had walked a little bit more, we would have crossed an imaginary invisible line, nothing would have happened, and then we would have been in Guatemala. Huzzah! In Santo Domingo, we went through Union Juarez Talcian, if that's how you say it. Kind of up right along the border here up this hill. I'm not sure how far up we went. Not very far, I don't think. <laughs> the final stop before heading back to the boatyard was a museum, I guess? A former coffee plantation and German house, which may or may not have had something to do with Nazis. It was just one of those strange roadside attractions that I really can't put my finger on. It was a popular swimming destination for the locals, anyways. And after that fun trip, the boat work was pretty much over. The very last hour of being in the boatyard, we cleaned up and we were treated to some home-cooked grub from our neighbors, who still had their galley intact. I visualize a lot when I work on the boat. Especially when I do the engine, I sit there half an hour, an hour before I touch anything, and I'm like, okay, I want to take out this boat. Probably the healthiest food we ate the whole time. <laughs> cool. Mm. And then a Colectivo taxi man came and whisked us away to the Tapachula bus station. You guys all waiting? And Robbie's lost already a lot of weight. Yes, look at him. It's hard to tell because it goes slowly, but you've lost like 15 kilos in what like a month it took you it took you a month to lose 15 kilos because you went to the gym for about two weeks what's the gym before a month Come on. a month okay it was really good for us to hop on the bus out of there and begin taking control of our lives again also helped us to get back on the water. Within 48 hours of arriving in the Mayan Riviera, we were casting off lines. We took the leap back into a functioning sailboat, Oops. this time with Robbie's parents on a friend's small sailboat. The water looking kind of alien to me but Robbie getting back into his natural element. We caught our first sight of the infamous sargassum weed plaguing the Gulf Coast and the Caribbean. Oof. And said hello to the new cetaceans of this side of Mexico. Remora. Si, si, remora. 
I'll be taking it off. Woo. Se no aguanta un momento. Tira lento adesso c'è un gap. Appena, no. appena arrivo al gap mi butto dentro. Lo mollo, eh? Tony and Celine run a sail loft here and an unofficial Italian kitchen. Here we would get back to eating what we catch and gather, all around eating well. The oven is uh, already preheated. Preheated to very high temperature. We put a lot of salt. Very high temperature to seal it. And one is half done, we put this on top to keep it moist. If you put it before all the, with the salt, all the fish juice is coming out and it's not going to be the same. We need to seal it before. And not too many things, in my opinion. Just one, in, one is enough. I'm, sometime I add uh, garlic or pepper, but uh, with the fresh fish, one herb. Cat food, fish uh, <laughs> sperm and fish eggs. Merci Big. 